I'm here with Bill Wake, a 15 plus year veteran of Agile and major contributor and thought leader in the space. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Hi, thanks, Alex. Um, let's talk about support escalations. The team is trying to do Agile and part of the premise is, hey, we're gonna get good flow time here and you know, you're gonna have two weeks where you know what you're working on, you know what success is, and then boom, all of a sudden all these you know, unexpected you know, tier three escalations, uh, escalations to development come into play. How do you manage that? Well, um, I think it's just, uh, if you're a team that's like a DevOps type team, you're doing development and operations, you're going to have those those things happen. So um, in some sense, you know, you're you're trying to be prepared for those as they come and, uh, um, and just deal with them. I mean, the fact is if we're spending half our time on support this this uh, sprint, you know, we're, we're probably not gonna be spending 100% of the time on uh, developing new features that we had hoped for. Um, you know, over time, you can kind of figure out the, the level at which uh, things tend to run and different teams handle this different ways. I've seen uh, a team that they sort of designated one person per sprint to say, you know, you're, you're the first line for the team and uh, um, if something comes in, you deal with it. If you need more help, we'll give it to you. But our team's assumption is you're, you're pretty much going to cover it for this time and, uh, you know, sort of setting a one team member expectation and, and adjusting the planning otherwise. Um, you know, as the teams get more into continuous deployment, um, it becomes less of an issue that they're just they're just taking whatever comes next anyway. They weren't gonna be spending two weeks, they were gonna be spending a couple hours or half a day on something. And if it turns out the next thing is a support thing, then let's do that. Or if it's the so urgent we have to drop what we're doing, we'll do that and get it moving through. Let, let's talk about the relationship between those two things content-wise. Is, um, is it hard for teams to look at support issues and get into the habit of saying, all right, well, is there something we can do differently about the way that we're building the product or deploying it to users that can reduce our support escalations versus, okay, well, we thought we wanted to develop this new stuff. Is that, is that a hard balance to strike? And you know, there's this idea of you know, new development is, is different than sustaining engineering. I mean, how do you find teams strike the right balance so that they reduce the amount of support escalations they get? Yeah, well, I think um, one thing is over time, we're trying to build a, a, a better level of quality into things because um, we recognize that if, if we say something's done, but it really isn't because we have this kind of quality gap, and at some point we have to we have to pay that back, and we can either make it better now and and leave out the gap, or we can leave the gap, and then we have to go support it later, and and you know it's interrupting, it's a pain, and all that. Then uh, you know we can we can see justification for doing things now to to find out that, and uh, you know the, the the teams I know that do well on things they they have retrospectives or, you know, more ongoing continuous kind of things. And, and they, they try and explore. Um, we have um, uh, in the lean startup, there's this notion of like a five wise analysis to say, you know, what caused this problem or how did this occur and, and really dig in to say, let's find something now. We'll fix the immediate thing. We'll invest in up the chain of the whys. Um, and fill in to say, you know, make this one a little better, a little better, a little better. And then the, the things that go wrong all the time tend to be less less frequent. Um, Ken Auer, another one of the uh, XP people that's been around a good long while, has a, he calls it the street light theory and says, you know, if you have a town and there's, um, it's all dark and you're gonna put in street lights, usually the two places are, you know, you'll put street lights in on busy streets because you get a lot of benefit from it for the people who are there all the time. And you put them in the streets that are maybe a little crime ridden and, uh, you know, the, they need a little more safety there. And, and that sort of corresponds to what we're doing here as the team goes through, you know, the, the, the crime areas correspond to the defects. And as we, as we hit and support uh, fixing those defects, we add the extra supportive tests and looking at our process and so on and, uh, you know, kind of get the streetlights there to make the flow go a little better overall. That's some great advice on, on managing the sort of practical realities of, of what happens in development cycle um, versus what we plan. Thanks, Bill.